Okay. Okay. We are five minutes. Five minutes into our panel time. It's been great. <laughs> yes. It's been very restful. It's been great. Very restful. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, so this panel is about five stars, four stars. Do you mind paying any attention to what it's about? Or do we mind talking about something else? Is it just us? Yeah, that's all. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's all about you. <laughs> one star or five star. Listen to the critiques of your material and turning those into positive influences on your writing. <laughs> and you can take a sooner or less than writing. We can talk about this. Talk about this. The writing reviews. No, that's one piece. No, let's not talk about our reviews. <laughs> well, no. Okay. Here, here, here's the thing. Um, there is a school of thought, uh, which Harlan Ellison ascribes to, uh, that the worst thing that can possibly happen to a writer is fandom. <laughs> and the reason for that is as soon as you start listening to the fans and what they want, you're not writing the work the way it needs to be written. If they could write, they'd write it themselves. I've heard him say that. Okay. So, you know, shut up and be happy for what you get. Uh, now, I've always had a small problem with that attitude. Um, I'm not going to say to you guys, yo, what do you want me to do with honor in the next book? Okay, and, and, and decide on the basis of your majority vote, you know, what, what's going to happen to it. But if you guys are invested in a character, for example, and you're talking to me about that character and how you see that character and whatnot, that frequently causes me to see aspects that I hadn't really thought about. Um, and sometimes people have, with frightening acuteness, told me why a character did something when I only had her do it because that's what felt right while I was working my way through the, through the book. And they say, well, the reason that she did this was, and you realize that they're absolutely right. That's the reason that she did it, and you just hadn't really considered it. Um, now, it's always worthwhile to listen to what your readers are saying. Um, sometimes, even when they have a valid point from one perspective, from your perspective, because you know what the underlying structure of the story is, you know where it's going and whatnot, kind of need to say to him, well, I'm sorry this part of it isn't working for you, but it has to be there for me, because this is the way I'm telling the story, and this is where it's going. In that respect, Harlan, God bless his pointy little head, has a point, okay? Um, yeah. Well, for me, it, it, it depends, um, because I, I, get, I get positive fan feedback. Yeah, I, I, I like to listen to what they say, but also I'm, you know, I'm the master of the I can do what I want, um, which is kind of cool. But, but there's other times that they'll point out things that I missed, or they'll have an entirely different take on things that are actually kind of neat. And uh, I really enjoy that. And uh, most of my reviews, however, my critiques and reviews, I just make fun of them and have a lot of fun. Uh, not, not from the fans, I'm talking about the critics. Um, there's this old saying that authors should never respond to their Amazon reviews. It's very unprofessional. Unless I do it really funny. Um, did you guys ever, did you guys see what I did when I went through and responded to all my one-star reviews? Okay, so this is amazing. All right, so what I did was I, I played it extremely obtuse. So I never, ever got offended and never got defensive. So these people would give these one-star reviews that are just like cruel and mean. And I would just like play along with it, like like take it in there, helpful advice. One guy said, "Oh, I'd be better off reading a magazine." So I was like, "I suggest Cat Fancy." And I put a little picture of Cat Fancy. <laughs> Another one. This is great to play about their review from Jim Butcher that was really positive. This was a few years ago, and the guy's like, "This is garbage." If you want to read good urban fantasy, read Jim Butcher. It's like, well, luckily Jim Butcher disagrees and then put up a. And then another one is like, this is right, read gut nut revenge porn. And this is what we did. If you want good fantasy, read Jim Butcher, which is right when the, um, the anthology, right before I announced the anthology, I go, well, you're in luck. Because apparently Jim Butcher likes right wing gun nut porn. So you can check out his new story in the Monster of the Files anthology. <laughs> <laughs> it's super obtuse to like all the criticisms and. 
And it, it was, yeah, so it, it can be fun. But well, I, had, I had this one guy, and I'm looking at the review on my book. I used to read all of David Weber's stuff. It's kind of straight into the crap or I'm going to buy a David Weber book again. And I went back and I said, this guy sounds familiar. I went back he said that on the last book and the one before that. <laughs> and the one before that. <laughs> you know, Oh, like sooner or later, there's got to be an end to this train, you know. But he's very, very, he's very bitter, but not super committed. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I had one guy who, who just, you know, wrote this incredibly. I don't read the Amazon reviews at all. I just, I pretty much ignore the only reviews that I really care too much about are kind of like Publishers Weekly or something like that. Um, but the the the. Um, uh, there was this one guy who reviewed the book on Amazon and was talking about how horrible it was and everything else. And you could tell from the review that he hadn't read the book. Okay? And you're sitting here, either he is simply out here to slam the book because he thinks I'm a dangerous militaristic troll who needs to be slammed, or he actually thought he read the book and got this out of it, or he's confused about which author he's reviewing. <laughs> okay. I've gotten that where um, it's pretty obvious to read the book Commission Publishers Weekly. I had the Publishers Weekly review for Art Magic was really obvious that they had just skimmed the sample chapters and then guessed everything that came after. Because <laughs> I'm like, this book is filled with talking animals. I'm like, there was plants in the squirrel scene, but no, there wasn't any talking animals. But it was like so wrong and obviously phoned in. Um, I love the ones where they just make up a bunch of crap and, and it's before the book comes out. Uh, like Goodreads, I guarantee on Goodreads, the second I, uh, one of my books is announced on the calendar and shows up on Goodreads, I'll have a bunch of one star reviews, which is pretty cool because Tony Weisskopf hasn't even read the manuscript at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Those are awesome. Well, I have, I have to say that Larry is more of a polarizing figure <laughs> than I am in many ways. But I've got my share of polarized reviewers out there. Not, not to compare to his, his polarization incarnate. Yeah. 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 Like That's how bad news. How do they work? I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm like, okay. Uh, there was a guy who had a fanzine that was published in uh, New Jersey. I think it had a circulation of about 40. <laughs> and he would mail a copy to me every time one of my books came out so that he could see how brilliantly he had ripped the book apart and uh, displayed, displayed my fascist, right-wing, militaristic <laughs> ignorance of the way the world really ran. <laughs> now this guy happened to be an acquaintance of a friend of mine in New Jersey who had made the mistake of giving him on Basilisk Station on the theory that he had finally found some military fiction that John Borkman would actually like. Okay? And I'm like, what is his problem? And, and David says to me, well, he is sort of an old school Stalinist. <laughs> I said, excuse me? He says, yes, he's a teacher for New York State. Oh. who for 40 years has been filling out on his employment form that he knows he's not a member of the Communist Party, doesn't support it in any way, but he's actually an old school Stalinist. I was like, okay, if you know someone by the company they keep, okay, you can form a pretty good opinion of them by the enemies they make, and I was just fine having this guy, you know, on the other side. Yeah, if I start, if I start like, having Stalinists Praise my work. It's time to it's time to hang it up. I'm gonna go write cartoons or something. That way, going to walk away. But he, I did. I did at one point. I wrote a response to one of his reviews and invited him to publish it in his fantasy. And he did. You know, to his, to his credit, he did. Uh, with the headline, "The Stuck Pig Squeals." <laughs> Admire his hoop spot. Okay. Uh, but I mean, he was, he was an interesting fellow. Uh, and you run into them, okay? You don't, you don't have to be Larry to find people. Oh, no, 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 no,
Some people just agree with me. See, I, my response to that, I would have played, yeah. <laughs> played the Ozzy Osbourne Black Sabbath War Pig song for him. <laughs> <Damn> right. <laughs> well, you know, I, I will say that nothing infuriates a, a, a moral crusader who has decided you are loathsome to say, well, thank you. <laughs> okay. Critics, critics, really, like people who are really like hardcore, angry uh, critic types, can't handle you accepting it with a sense of humor and being funny about it because uh, they can't handle. They can handle a lot, but they can't handle being laughed at. And so when you embrace the suck and you just have fun with it, um, it just drives you bad. And uh, I had to, I had to come to terms with that when I was first starting out. When you're first starting out, guys. You could go on book tour and oh. you can have like this wonderful tour and you know you could be selling tons of books and on top of the world and then you read a review and it's a negative review and it'll like hurt your feelings. Yeah. That's why I got rid of all my feelings. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, honestly, you, you, to do this, you gotta kinda have a thick skin because there are gonna be people that are just kind of jerky and they and they're not really critics to be critics, they're critics because it's one of the so few socially acceptable ways to be a bully. And, and actually get paid for it. I know so social media in general seems to allow bullying. Um, I've got some good reviews on Twitter. <laughs> okay, I, 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 I'll say this. There's a difference between somebody who get, obviously has an axe to grind and somebody who has a problem, possibly even a serious problem, with what you've done in a book or how you've done or how your storytelling voice has shifted. Yes. Um, there are legit criticisms. There are. Um, in the in the universe, for example, there are cusp points in which the story changes because Honor's level of responsibility changes, mm -hmm. she is changes, the scale of the war changes, whatever. And if you go back and you really read the series, you'll find that at every one of those cusp points, my storytelling voice has changed just a little bit because I'm dealing with different aspects of what's happening. Um, and some people, by the time I get to where I am in, in uh, Uncompromising Honor, people are like, oh God, I miss the days when you know, she was fighting the single ship action and the books were all about you know, the battles and, and all this instead of, okay, the, the economics and the, the, the politics and why is this war being fought, and, et cetera. And I can understand that. But the problem is that the story itself has changed, and therefore the way the story is told has to change. Now that doesn't mean that they can't give me a legitimate criticism about how I've changed in telling the story, but sometimes the criticism is simply that I have changed yeah, in that's, telling the story. And that's not a helpful criticism, because what it is is if they're critiquing you, but the critique is, if I were you, I would have done this. That's basically a really useless criticism because they're not you and they didn't write it. And, it. and what they would have done might have worked for them in telling the story, might have been successful in telling the story, but it won't work for you in telling the story. I think I mentioned earlier that Tim Zahn and I reached a point on the current book where the way that I tell the story, the way that my voice tells the story, and the way that his voice tells the story, were in collision. And even though I am the senior partner on the Honorverse, I wanted him as the lead writer on these books. And that meant that in the end, it's like, okay, this is an Honorverse tactical situation. Therefore, that has to be written the same way that they've been written all the way from the beginning of the series. We can't simply ignore acceleration times and so forth because we didn't do those in, in Star Wars. And I, that's not a slam on Tim. They didn't do that in Star Wars. It wasn't a factor. So they moved at the speed of walk. Right. And so I had to completely take apart and restructure tactical situations because you couldn't get there from here. And I was working on doing it in a way that wound up with the same outcome that gave him what he needed for the story to proceed. But I was writing the battles in my voice, using my technique, with multiple internal viewpoints jumping around and everywhere else. And that's just totally alien to Tim's storytelling voice. So I had two options. One was to say, okay, it's just going to be two different voices, and the reader's just going to have to deal. 
which has been done successfully, okay, or, okay, Tim, here's what happens. You go deal with making it happen in the way that works for you. You don't have to put in everything that I put in. It's there for you to use if you need to use it, if you need to drop the internal point of view and go to another way to get the information across. That's fine with me. Do it the way that you need to do it to make the story work for you. That's one aspect of somebody telling you how you should write the story that you have to pay attention to. Okay, now when it's a, when it's a reader who is saying, boy, I really like these books before you started doing this and so and this and such, you have to think about why you're doing this and so and this and such, and if you need to be doing it, then you have to say to that reader, I'm sorry this isn't working for you. This is the way that it has to be. 